Today as we were worshipping, it was never planned like that. But the Lord was speaking in the worship about his love. About his love. And as I closed the worship also, I said this. There is power in your love. When you love someone, in this world, when people love someone, they love to get something from them. They love because either they got it or they want it. If a young boy falls in love with a girl, the whole idea is he wants to have that girl in his life. But he will say, I love you. But whole mind of his is that I want to have this girl for myself. That's not love. That's a part of his lust which he expresses as love. Love, what God has revealed in our life is, is not about receiving. When you say you love them or you love somebody, it's about you want to give something to them. That's why the Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave. He gave. He loved you and me that he gave. He had only one son that he gave that son so that he can gain you and me as sons and daughters. But first he gave. If we truly say we love, what is it that we are giving we need to say? And my giving reveals how much I love. You know, today's generation, love is about expressing it. And they express in terms of giving chocolates and flowers. But the whole idea, you can truly know that if that person loves us after the marriage, does that chocolate come in? Does those flowers come in? You ask any couple, they'll say, before I used to get lot, now hardly any. Valentine Day has to come for me to receive the flowers and chocolate. So what was it? The man love, showed his love basically to get something from that person. That's a deceptive love. When we truly love, love is about giving. And there is power in true love. Heavens will move when true love is revealed. God will move for you if you truly love God for who he is, not because you want something. God will start moving in your lives to establish great and mighty things in your life if you truly know that he is God. Today I want to challenge each one of you through John chapter 20, the gospel of John chapter 20 from verse 1 to 18. We are not going to read the whole passage for a short of time, but we are going to pick certain things from that passage about a woman called Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene was not an intellectual woman who had degrees like Paul. She was not a woman who had a lot of experiences in her trade like Peter. She was not the woman who probably was born in a palace and was recognized that this is the man this is a woman who is to set the people free and do something great things. But she was one of those women probably the whole society had neglected. For the whole society would have said she is good for nothing because she is filled with demons. She was a woman, an ordinary woman. There is nothing of her background written. But if you scan through the gospels, you will know that she was a woman who was cast, who had been cast out seven demons from her life. I know if one demon is there on someone, what is the condition of their life? How they respond and how they behave. She was filled with seven demons and all Jesus did was had cast out these seven demons from her life. 
That's all the history of this woman is. But for what she received, the deliverance she received, the miracle she received, she dedicated her whole life to the Lord and she loved him. She loved him so much. Let's turn our Bible to John chapter 20, verse 1 and 2. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. You know, Mary Magdalene was one of those who early morning she came to the tomb. She came to in search of Jesus and her coming was the first person. In the sun is yet to rise. The disciples are yet to come. But she is there early in the morning. She is not only early in the morning. If you turn your Bible to Mark chapter 15, verse 40 and 41, when the crucifixion was taking place, earthquake happened, everybody ran, including the disciples, but she and other two women waited there, stayed there till the end. So she was one of the last one to leave that place, Golgotha, when Jesus was being crucified. And she is the first one to come to that tomb. She was the last woman who left Golgotha. Turn your Bible to Mark chapter 15, verse 40 and 41. There were also women looking on from afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the less, and of Joseph and Solomon, who also followed him and ministered to him when he was in Galilee. Amen. You see, the three women is being spoken about. This morning, what I want to talk to you is, the power of your love. The power of your love. Your love has power which can move the heavens. And when you reveal that love, a true love will reveal that heaven has moved in your situation. I praise God for these women who loved Jesus that they did not even care for their own lives. When every man left that place, these three women stayed there. Men, they are scared. Let me salute the, all the women who are sitting here. You, should, you are more bold. You are willing to serve the Lord more than the men. It was during that time, and even today we see that. It's no different. Mary Magdalene, Mary and Salome were the three women who stayed back till the end. That is, after the crucifixion was over, Jesus died on the cross, there was a big earthquake and everybody ran away. All the disciples ran away. But they stayed there. What is going to happen next, they wanted to see. Then Joseph the Artemis and then Nicodemus came, brought down the body, quickly embalmed it and put the body in the tomb. Only these three women were there. All those who said, I love my Lord. Peter said, I'm willing to die with you. John said, I love my Lord so much that he laid his head on his breast, the Bible says. Everybody said, Lord, I love you. But in the end, it is one who did not say anything. It was she who was staying there till the end. And it is she who rose up early in the morning to go back to the tomb to see where my Lord is. Church, definitely we all speak about our love for our Savior, for our God. But God sees our actions. God sees how do we respond to that. God was seeing this woman's heart. You know, Jesus revealed himself after his resurrection to many people. 
After his resurrection, he revealed to the two disciples who were walking on the road of Emmaus. He revealed himself. Jesus revealed himself to the disciples who were scared and who shut all the doors and windows and they were sitting inside. Jesus revealed himself right in their midst. Then Jesus revealed to Thomas who was not willing to believe his resurrection. He again revealed himself. He revealed himself to many, many people. But first he revealed himself to Mary Magdalene. He, she was not the 12 disciples. She was not of those who would count as that she was one of the disciples. But she always followed Jesus. She was there to serve Jesus. You know, church, we all talk so much things about how we are doing for the Lord. It's good. But our true heart is how much we love him. And because we love him, I'm willing to do this. Mary Magdalene, early in the morning, the Bible says that she rose up and came to the tomb. And moment she came to the tomb, the first thing she sees is that the stone has been taken away from the tomb. The stone has been moved out from the tomb. She's the first one to see that the body of Jesus is not there. She didn't examine into the whole tomb, but she saw the stone is moved. But she ran and gave the information to Peter and John. She went and told Peter and John. Now Peter and John runs down to see this reality. Wasn't the Peter who said that this is Christ the Messiah, the Son of God. Wasn't Peter who said that Lord, I love you the most. Don't you know I love you? But when time came, he was nowhere. It was this woman early in the morning, even before the sun rose, she rises up, wakes up Peter, wakes up John and says, the tomb is open. Church, when Mary Magdalene saw Jesus dying on the cross, when she saw the crucifixion and his death, for her, it was not the death of a Lord or death of her master. It was that Something is out from her life now. She doesn't have a place actually to go because for her, her life was only Lord Jesus. She used to follow Jesus everywhere. Not because Jesus demanded it, but because she loved him. She was after him. Everywhere he went, she was there. And we finally find that she is at the foot of the cross when Joseph and Nicodemus brings down the body of Jesus. Church, this morning I want to ask you, we all sing, we all say, we love our God, we love Jesus. How much do you love him? How much do I love him? My love for him can move the heavens because Mary Magdalene's love moved God from heaven. If you truly love him, there is a move of heaven for you and me. And this is what was experienced by Mary Magdalene. When she informed Peter and John, Peter and John ran down. The Bible says, John was a faster guy who could run, overtook Peter, and reached at the entrance of the tomb. And then he did not go in. He waited. Let Peter go. I will not go in, Baba. If something happens. You know, most of us have this. We are excited. But I will not be the first one. If everyone rises up, then I will also rise and go to the, for the altar call. He wait for someone else to do something first. He waited at the entrance. Peter came rushed and straight entered the tomb. The Bible says, 
both of them saw the same thing what the cloth which wrapped jesus was kept aside and the handkerchief was well folded and kept aside they believed what did they believe you know somebody has taken jesus somebody has taken the body of jesus the bible says that let's turn our bible chapter 20 from verse 8 onwards then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also and he saw and believed for as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead jesus has been preaching to the disciples that he is going to rise from dead but that did not register in their mind it was not one time not two times not three times but number of times jesus said that they will crucify me and on the third day son of man will rise up but it did not register in their mind so they believe someone has taken the body of jesus and the next reaction is what one who said he is going to die for him one who is loved him the bible says that then the disciples went away again to their own house that's all i have some things to do i have to go and catch my fish i have to feed my family i have to make sure that those things are done i'm going john said i need to also go i need to take care of my things my errands i my mother in law uh, peter would have said my mother in law is waiting for me if i don't get the fish no food for me so i have to go you know peter and john had many other things going in their lives but for mary magdalene she didn't have anything else to do not because she didn't have anything else to do her focus was jesus her ultimate was jesus her life was jesus i am dedicated to him i want my jesus she stayed back she stayed back with the desire that i cannot lose my master even though he is dead i want his body i will take his body that's what her uh, reaction was i will take his body i will do something about but please give that body to me thinking that a gardener would have taken that body whereas peter and john who were supposed to be the disciples who walked very close with jesus the chapter is finished oh now we have to move on and get other things done in our lives i'm sure peter has a family because we know about his mother in law so he has all is a family man he has all other cares which he has to take care so his love for jesus is about everything and in that i love jesus also someone like us Yes, we love Jesus, but we have all other things. I have my job, I have my salary, I have to feed my family, I have to pay my mortgage, I have to pay my car bills. Everything is there. But for Mary Magdalene, it was everything is Jesus for me. Everything is Jesus. It is centered on Him. She loved Him that much. Peter and John went back to their houses. They had to finish all of their errands, but she stayed there. Let's read from verse eleven. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Amen. Peter and John they came they didn't see the angels in the same place the angels were there but their eyes could not see the angels but Mary Magdalene saw the angels you know when you love someone the intense of your love will be so much that god will start revealing things how the lord can take you to the next level you know mary magdalene saw the two angels sitting but peter and john they came rushing there saw the close there they left back home my job is over done 
we talk many things. So what? Everybody talks. That's how people thought probably. You know, many times as Christians, we talk so many things. Bible says so many things. So what? I need to do what I have to do, I want to do, or what I need to take care. That's how Peter and John was behaving. Whereas Mary Magdalene, in her heart was the love for her Lord. And she saw two angels sitting there. Church, you know, first time when you meet Jesus, it's about your sins being washed away. You're being redeemed. You're being set free. Turn your Bible to John chapter 1 verse 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. See, first time when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming, he immediately says, This is who? The Lamb of God. Who takes away the sin of the world, he'll take my sin away also. It was concerning him too. You know, we want God for things which are concerning us. I want God, I love God because he will do great and mighty things for me. So I like this God. I love this God. But John, when he saw next time Jesus, in verse 36, you see, he just says, behold the lamb. He does not say, the one who takes away the sin of the world. You know, first time is a time where you experience redemption. You take baptism. That's when you are set free. But the next day is your communion which you partook today morning. Your communion reveals you grasp that love of his and you love him and you want to have that fellowship. No more it's about, Lord forgive my sins. He took my sins on the cross. But it's about my fellowship with him. This communion signifies your love to him. Your love. Because he already revealed his love to you and you recognize that. You proclaim that. But we fail to proclaim because for us, it's just a ritual. You know, our struggle is where, you know, we have taken everything and I, I have to do this. For God, he's not interested in you and me to partake in a communion just because the Bible says and the pastor has said it, but because you love him. There is love in you that draws you to partake in his death. Church, when John saw him second time, he did not by mistakenly leave out the second part of the verse which he said in verse 26. That he is the one to take away the sins of this world. He, because now he knew who Jesus was. And for you and me, how is my walk with him is it the same what was on the day you took baptism? Or is the intensity of your love much, much more because now you know him? Now it is not about forgiveness, not about healing, not about deliverance, but because he is my Lord. He is my master. That was Mary Magdalene. She was all about who Jesus is in her life. It was not about the miracle. Yes, through that miracle, she came to the Lord. But then now it is all about who Jesus is in her life. When Mary saw this two angels sitting there, the angels asked only one question. And what is it? Why are you weeping here? Why are you weeping? And her response was what? Because they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. Peter and John also knows the Lord is taken away. 
but they're not interested anymore where they have put his body but for mary magdalene even though he is not alive i still want him you know the intents of love you know we all attend funeral and in the funeral we all see that see if you have going to a funeral and if he's just an acquaintance to you you won't wait for the whole funeral everything is to get over you'll go go in the wake just see him and go and do your business but if you are a little more closer a friend you might stay for the whole wake talk about him how he was how he was good and then you leave but if you are a relative even after the funeral is over you will hang around in that place might be a spouse might be a relative might be an uncle whoever it might be if everything is over people have left but they will be lingering in that place because they loved that man the one who died they loved them mary magdalene was not a relative of jesus she was not related to jesus but she, yet she loved him so much that she is lingering around the tomb because she wants this master she can't afford to release her from her life that no let him go away peter and john both had expressed how much they loved how much they really honored jesus but they were not interested about his body where they had been taken yet mary magdalene she said somebody has taken the body and i don't know where they have laid him i'm broken because he is all that was for me today is jesus all that for you or there are many other things and one of the thing is jesus we have many things in our lives which are important and then one of the thing is jesus so we'll come on a sunday and worship pastor is saying so much so let me at least give my name for one day that i can go to saturate nj so pastor will not say that i didn't go you know our love is to the extent that we can please the people whom we are around we if we truly love god our response is different our response is all about him then finally she turns her head let's read from verse 13 onwards then they said to her woman why are you weeping she said to them because they have taken away my lord and i do not know where they have laid him now when she had said this she turned around and saw jesus standing there and did not know that it was jesus jesus said to her woman why are you weeping whom are you seeking amen you know she is so passionate about jesus that she her heart was only that she was seeking one person in her life and that is jesus she knows jesus is crucified she was there till the last breath of jesus she knows jesus was buried in this tomb because she was there she was there during the burial time she knows he is dead she never probably would have heard what jesus told the disciples that he is going to resurrect he told the disciples that he is going to resurrect but those disciples did not listen they heard they did not perceive it they did not receive it that jesus is going to arise there is a resurrection many of us here preaching hear the word read the word but we are not able to receive that there is a resurrection in our dead situation if we can believe in the word we still hang around in that same situation oh now is dead everything is gone finished but here there is a woman she did not know about the resurrection but she is hanging around i want him still I still want him I cannot leave him and go because there is no place for me to go he is my life that was Mary Magdalene heaven is watching this the bible says jesus never did anything of his own 
and Jesus after his resurrection he has to straight ascend to the father because father is the one who has raised him up but father from heaven told Jesus there is someone waiting for you in that garden her love turned the heart of the father because Jesus is never going to do anything without the instruction of the father that was Jesus the word confirms it very solidly so father has to tell Jesus that there is a soul who is seeking you even when you were dead and buried she is still waiting for you go and meet her first if you truly love your God heaven will move for you come down for you because your love is so powerful how much do you love him will be revealed because God is willing to move for you God is a jealous God I'm sure son should be first reaching heaven before he reveals himself to anyone in this world but God moved in heaven for only one reason there is a woman's love which is being revealed she is waiting for only one person and that is Jesus how much do I wait for him how much do I say that yes even if it is hard I am going to wait upon this word because Jesus said this how much do I say that Lord has said it it is going to pass how much ever hard it is I am going to wait on him because it is his word I know it is true I love him so what is the intents of your love? God is willing to move based on your heart where your love is. If I truly love him, heaven will never stop. I have seen and have experienced that in my life. That's the reason I can tell you this boldly. I'm still experiencing it. When if you truly love him, not because you love yourself, but because who he is, he will move for you. Church, the Lord wants to do great and mighty things in our lives. But he's looking at our heart. Here we know Mary Magdalene, she only said, assuming that Jesus was asking her, why are you weeping? Now it is Jesus who is asking her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? You know, because God the Father has already revealed to Jesus that she is seeking him. You know, the, the angels did not ask, whom are you seeking? But Jesus, because God told him, because he does not do anything without the Father says to him heaven responded to Mary Magdalene's love the power of her love we all want God to respond to our prayer to our needs but what is our love how is our love towards him you know if we love someone in this world we make sacrifices so that we make that person happy. That person will respond to my love. I will spend an extra money. I will go an extra mile. I will do things that will touch their heart so that she will or he will respond to my love. If that is so much in this world, how do I respond to God's first love? How was my response to that? Mary Magdalene responded to her, supposing that she was a guard and that he was a gardener who was asking, said that, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. I don't know how I'm going to take this body, but I want to take him away. Please. Tell me where he is. You know her desperate love of hers drew God's attention to her. When we need something, we are desperate. 
right if something goes wrong we are desperate god should answer my situation immediately we show our desperation why god has to move but god will move when you show your love desperately not when you want something not we go to him and demand something because you think that is important for your life but when he sees that love for him heaven will move into your situation and moment she thought it was a gardener and she responded that way i want to take him jesus called out her name mary my sheep hears my voice when he calls out you how do you respond i am not sure whether he is calling me or is it my thinking because i don't want to do what he is calling me to do most of the time that is what the problem is so i'll reconfirm it i'll sit on prayer i will ask somebody to pray for me my sheep hears my voice jesus did not call out and say that mary i am jesus he just said mary and immediately mary responded Rabboni my master my lord church moment you hear god is speaking to you god is calling you how is my response for her her heart which was empty she was seeking that my place where i was with my lord is no more that place i don't have that experience and once she got that word once her name was called her heart was filled her heart was filled only for one reason she only longed him who can fill her heart and she responded raboni my master my lord she turned to embrace him but jesus said i haven't ascended to the father church because he is supposed to first ascend to the father after that only he was supposed to reveal himself to all of them but the heavenly father who held back jesus and said there is someone's love which is holding me to take you up first go and meet her how much do i love my heavenly father how much do i love my jesus we have to ask every day instead of putting a list of demands and asking god to answer our prayer let us ask ourselves at least once in a while how much do i love him how have i expressed that love my brother just shared it's a command go and share this gospel it's a command it is not an option am i willing to obey that you know that that time we have 10 excuses to make which is i have this i have that but that is a basic command which the lord has given you might not travel to as an international preacher but you are where at your place of work place where you worship where you live are you able to respond in some way and share the love of jesus to someone because you have experienced that love if i have in the experience that love i will never share this love to anyone for sure 100% if i have not experienced this love i cannot share this love to someone but if i say i have experienced this love i cannot zip my lips i need to talk to someone because this is the greatest love anyone can show and i have experienced it how can i hold back this love i love him i will pay every price to make sure that a boy a young boy a girl or a young man or a young woman is saved today the lord brings opportunities in my life in your life or you don't have to preach the gospel but you can say god loves you and there is one who loved you so much that he came down and gave his life for you He forgives your sin. 
there is no theology needed for you to learn and share this but because i have love i can share this i have experienced this love so i can share this otherwise what it is you know we have in the worldly love all i need is what god can give me that's why i have come to you sometimes we think we go to church you know sometimes i ask people how do you love god i every sunday i go to church you go coming to church doesn't show your love to god you know it has become a ritual in my life right from my childhood i have been raised up in a christian home where my father has a priority that i should go to church on sunday morning and i have done that that does not reveal my love to him if that is all then it is sad this morning i want to tell you there is power in your love and when there is power in your love which means that if you truly know him and you have experienced him you know you your love will move the heavens to come down and meet you at their place that is lo- love today as i close this word i want to ask you do you want to experience god in your life the lord only says one thing he has one commandment love your god with all your heart with all your soul with all your strength and with all your might love him and that love is not because you want something but because who he is he is my rabboni he is my master he is my lord he is my lord and i love him when you come to that point that stage i tell you even before you have thought or asked the lord will move in the heavens for you i can truly say this as a testimony god moves when he sees your love for him the price you pay so that you will still reveal how much he you love him this morning i want to challenge you as i call you to rise up that are you willing to really love him with mary magdalene loved